welcome to this week's piece. So I found this old chair on Marketplace and I just felt like it needed another chance. It was very structurally sound. There it was this little crack here that I'm pretty sure was damaged during it being drug somewhere on that just one side of the foot, but it wasn't moving at all. It was just kind of like the outer piece was chipped off. And then at some point somebody had put a weird back thing on and then either the same person or somebody else in one of its many lives ripped it off. So we've got a lot of work to do. And because of that, it makes me extra thankful to all of you who have got me coffee the last month. So here's my little list. You guys are just so wonderful. Thank you so, so, so much. I just can't tell you how much you guys warm my heart and my soul with these coffees. I think it is just, you guys are the kindest humans ever. Thank you so much. So here I'm going around and taking out all of the nails that were kind of left over from whenever they ripped whatever they had on the back of the chair. Um, I have this awesome little, it's like a little nail puller. I found it at an antique store. If you guys don't go to antique stores and look at the tools, you definitely should because you'll find some really fun, interesting things there that you just don't always find at, you know, your local hardware store. So I do recommend going and looking at that because I use this thing all the time. Um, some of these nails were still pretty far in, so I used just a thinner putty knife type thing. Um, and it really slid in under there to just pry it up a little so that I could get my little nail remover out. Work like a charm. So this took just roughly a billion years. Um, there were so many nails left. I don't, I just, I'm always curious what happen to these pieces before I get them. I just wish I could know the stories because you know it had to have been interesting. Like what? You just left the... Okay. I'll, I'll fix it. It's fine. But yeah, so these pieces, they generally just take a lot, a lot of time because it, there's no like covering it up. I can't use my regular stuff to fix this because I'm going to paint it and you know, you actually have to do like, I don't want to say a perfect job on repairs because nothing that I do is perfect. You guys know that I'm not, I haven't been doing this for 50 years. Um, I'm still very new to a lot of the things that I do. And all I do is just practice and hope that I do as good of a job as I can with my current set of skills and then hope to grow them and improve upon them as I do each and every piece that I do. So... But yeah, I mean, if we were going to paint this chair, it would have been a lot easier because you can just put some filler in those and it, it's, it just makes life easier. So now I'm going to look at this crack in the leg. Well, so it had been this way for so long. Like I said, the, sh the chair was structurally sound. So whoever had it had no reason to fix it because it wasn't doing anything but you could see how long it had been cracked and open. And so when something has been cracked apart, the wood like expands and contracts and does all the things. And when it starts doing that, you can't get it back together the way that you could had it just been a recent break and then you could instantly glue it and it's like it never happened. So this has been apart for so long that the wood actually doesn't fit together anymore. So I clamp it try and see where I'm at, what I need to do to kind of make it fit as best I can. And so that's what I'm doing here. I realize that it just, it's not gonna fit around the way that I need it to. So I'm making sure that I clean out everything that I can get out of there. And then it's still not enough. So I take one of my carving tools and I actually have to then carve out around the curved edge there because the curved edge has actually expanded out and no longer fits into place. So I'm just going around the curve and making it a little bit bigger, wider to fit around the leg of the chair so that I can get it back in place. And then I just use my Gorilla Wood glue, get it on there, clamp it, and it's as good as I could get it. Now, if this went to like a legit professional, I'm sure they could do a better job, but I felt like this looked pretty good when I was done with it. And then where all of those little holes were, I'm just taking some sandpaper. I do really, really fine, fine sandpaper. This is an old sanding block, so it's probably 
well over a 220 sanding. Like, it, we're talking really fine. And then I did the same thing with some other just, like, regular sheets of sandpaper. I've got, like, 300 grit. You, I just don't want to actually go through to any of the wood. I'm just trying to take, like, the finish off and any pieces of wood that are sticking out from taking the nails out. And then there is a pretty big chunk that was missing off of this part of the back. Um, it was just, I'm guessing when they ripped off the back, it ripped off a, a big chunk of wood. So what we're going to do here is I'm taking some chisels and I'm going to chisel out a section so that we can then put in a piece of wood and do a full repair. So that's all I'm doing here. I put the tape down so that I get minimal splintering and then I'm using two different chisel sizes and they're both however wide I need it to be that's the the width of the chisel that I'm using so I have one smaller one one larger one one are for the ends and one is for the longer sides I'm pretty sure you can see this you probably don't need me explaining everything but so I work very very slowly because I have not been doing this like I said for a million years it's only been you know a couple years of actual restoration like this where I'm not just gonna fill something and paint over it to where it looks really good but if you were to strip off the paint you could you know just see wood filler I don't want to see wood filler I want to see wood so clearing this out I'm making this a 90 degree angle and then you can use um, a square or something like that to make sure that your angles are right and just chiseling it it almost needs to be perfect and that sounds daunting, but it's really not. If you just take your time, go slow, get them in there. And then this chair is a quarter sawn oak chair. I don't have any quarter sawn oak, so just using regular. <laughs> um, and then so I can match the grain as much as I possibly can. But that's about this actual this piece right here actually looked really really good to repair there you'll see a picture at the very end this repair looked really really good I was very pleased with it um, but yeah so I'm just using my wood glue I would actually prefer to use hide glue on this but my shop has been so cold that my hide glue that I specifically bought because it didn't need to be heated up uh, it's too cold in my shop to use <laughs> um, so I'm just using my gorilla glue because it didn't sludge up on me. So I'm just putting this in here, I'll clamp it, and then we will fix it once the glue has hardened overnight. I did leave this overnight to fully dry because I didn't want to mess with it until I knew 100% that it was dry. Like I said, my shop is very cold and just leaving it for two hours and then kind of sawing off the extra and using chisels on it just seemed a little scary to me. So overnight dry time. And then for this little arm piece that had the chunk missing out of it, this was a really easy, just one little hit with a the chisel there, and you got a straight edge, and then you can use a piece of wood to fill in that section. So this one, I could not get the grain to match because again, I don't have quarters on oak, and it was really hard to make that perfect. So it looks fine, not my best work, but it looks good, and it's at least a piece of wood there and not wood filler or not a huge missing gouge in the arm anymore. Um, I did do a little stain work with it, which helped a lot. But eventually it'd be nice to have every type of wood and then every cut of that wood so that you can match up things. And of course this is on the corner edge of an arm. It's re it would be really hard to match that up anyways. So I'm just sanding this because it has a rounded spot on it that I had to get to match up going around the back edge of the chair. And then it's the same procedure. Glued it on, clamped it. The clamp didn't work so well because I didn't have the angles exactly right, so I taped and then clamped just to make sure. And then again, that was left overnight as well.
And then once I knew that that was fully cured, I used my pull saw and just cut off the excess. And then I'll just go in with my chisels and carving tools and match it up to the curve of the chair. And that's it. You just kind of go with it, take off little, little, little pieces at a time. You don't want to take off anything too big or you can split your wood and then get the wrong shape and every, it's just, yeah, little, little bit at a time. So I have been dying to use this kit. It has the super, super hard waxes in it that you have to melt at a fairly high temperature. And it's great for filling. And it has multiple shades to match all kinds of species of wood, which is awesome. And then it comes with this little tool so you don't have to use the hot knives. This thing takes batteries and then you press a button on it and it heats up hot enough to melt the wax. And it has a teeny tiny applicator tip, which is kind of perfect for these incredibly small nail holes that were all around. You guys, I can't even tell you how many nail holes there were. Just roughly shy of a million, I think. So this was very tedious work. It was exciting to watch it come together because I hadn't used this stuff before and I'd been wanting to use it for a really long time. But it's cool because it fits right in. You can kind of clean up as you go. It hardens almost instantly, so you don't have to worry about going back and like super sanding anything back like a regular wood filler or anything. Um, this is a little sponge that came with the kit that kind of works as a very mild, super light. I want to say it's almost like a magic eraser sponge. Um, and it does a teeny tiny bit of, I'm going gonna, gonna to say sanding, but it's not actually sanding. It's just good for that. But I just go around and do this exact thing around all of the holes that were all around the entire back of the chair. Also what I loved about this is that there were so many different shades that you could actually, I used two different color blocks to go throughout the chair because as you can see there's tons of varying shades in the chair just because of time and 
it was nice to have both of those to kind of go back and fill them in the right spots and get the right color wax. Once I finished filling everything, I did go in with a very, very, like, very light abrasive and went over and sanded everything smooth. Um, again, I was trying not to hit wood, I just kind of flushing everything out. And then I took my Chalk Mountain Cleaner, went around and cleaned up the entire chair. So the chair was closest to the overall color would have been like a, a walnut, the stain that was on it. So some areas, like I said, were darker, some areas were lighter. So I just kind of muted down the walnut with some mineral spirits. And that's what I did as my overall base to kind of go over any areas that needed almost like a refresh. And then this here was the repair I did on the arm. And I worked on this a lot because it obviously wasn't matching exactly right because it didn't have the exact same green pattern that was already there in the arm. So I did the base color to kind of bump it up to the age of the wood. And then I kind of tried using darker shades of the stain to add in some extra grain lines and things like that. This one actually on the side of the back turned out so well. Like I'm just, I'm so proud of this one. Um, but again, I'm just adding multiple shades of the same stain color and going back with a tiny brush and anywhere where it needed just like a, a thin light overwash because of the sanding and things like that I did the one that was watered down with mineral spirits and anytime I needed a stronger version I could go in straight with the stain and then once I got down to the bottom of the chair the patina was much darker, so I did the same thing with the watered-down version of the walnut stain and then went in with the regular full strength. And then I was noticing some parts that were just still too, too light, so I actually used my Kona stain, which was much darker, and it matched the patina of the chair much better. And here there were just some old paint spatters from, I mean, there's no way I could know what they were from. But they were kind of, some of it was sitting in the grain and everything. So I just very carefully with a razor blade went through and 
shaved them off and then gave the arms kind of the same treatment to bring it up with the rest of the chair. And of course, when I flipped over the chair and had it actually laying down, I realized, oh, there is a huge lack of pigment in this one section. So again, I tried doing the full strength stain on this one spot, and it just still wasn't dark enough. So I went through, filled it all in, tried to see where I was at, and it just, I was not happy with it at all. So um, you'll watch me, I'll end up going over the whole thing with the mineral spirits watered down version spreading it all out and then I'll go in with the Kona stain and fix it that way and that one was much darker and because I had then taken the mineral spirit watered down walnut version all over the entire thing it helped the Kona one to blend out and not have such a definitive line from the lacking pigment. I hope that made sense but you can watch.
let all the stain settle, relax for two days. And then I went in with my orange scented furniture wax from Chalk Mountain. Oh, this stuff smells so delightful. Um, so I did, I sealed the entire piece in this. And it just kind of helps nourish the wood and lock everything in. Um, their waxes seal really, really hard, so I feel comfortable using this on this chair. Um, and I also didn't show it, but this has to sit overnight, and then you can go back and buff it the next day. Oh hi, Taryn here, and uh, we've got a finished chair. So I don't typically do restorations like these because these take a billion times longer than something like this. That seems to have a lot more involved to it, but these take just a ton of really small, delicate work that it just, everything takes longer and you have to wait for everything to dry in between and it's just, it's quite an ordeal. With that said, sometimes I deem them worthy. Like this piece was just, incredible. I couldn't bear to paint it because it's lovely and it has so much just beautiful patina on it from all the lives that it has lived in the past that I could not destroy that in good heart. So this week is a restoration piece. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, that wax product, okay, it was awesome. The wax itself was great. The little tool that comes with it was almost great until the batteries ran out or it completely stopped working. So I'm not sure which, I will have to try another round of batteries because the light still came on but it wasn't getting hot anymore. So I actually heated up the tip with my heat gun and finished out the process that way. I have to get new batteries to see if it actually still works. If it still functions, it's fine. It just had Chivo batteries in it, which is awesome. If it's completely useless, I will obviously still be using the wax because the wax was actually just incredible and I love it. So I will definitely be, you know, getting use out of it, but the little, not good. It, it just it wasn't great once the battery died. Um, but again, still worked, got everything finished, filled in all of the holes. You guys saw how many holes there were all over this entire chair. I didn't refinish the seat because I actually liked the burgundy color that it was and I feel like whoever loves this chair will actually appreciate the seat color that's on it. So that was my thoughts on that. Um, if I have to, I can redo it, but I think I'm just going to try and um, leave it as is for now. So okay, let's get into some photos and uh, thank you guys so much for being amazing. We are almost at 6,000 already. I can't believe it. You guys just so, so good to me. Thank you so much. Uh, all right. Photos, and I'll see you next week.